Okay everyone, uh, this is a long-awaited uh, June sales update video. Doing a little bit different this time. What I'm using is a program called OBS, which I'm just getting to grips with. So hopefully this is going to record uh, my display in a little bit more of a professional fashion than the last time. And if it's working right, then uh, I've also got a little picture of me there in the bottom. Not that you particularly want to see that. It is rather late, hence the dressing gown. But I, I you know what, I don't care. <laughs> Um, so I've got a microphone as well now, proper microphone, so yeah, I'm in business with all this. So what I'm going to do, it's not going to last as long as the last one, so what I'm going to briefly go through what my um, June sales were. Uh, the July ones, well, we're nearly at the end of the July now, it's the 31st, um, so I'm actually going to put that in the next couple of weeks. This is really late, this video, I'm afraid. So, But yeah, I'm just going to show you some of the more interesting sales that I had go through my um, totals for the last month and see how much profit we've made on everything. So yeah, let's crack on. Okay, so this is a really boring spreadsheet here. It's my June sales. I thought I'd lost this and an absolute nightmare. I panicked for about an hour just before trying to recover it. And luckily what I'd done, Google Docs is amazing. It actually shows you every sort of time you've altered it. And I'd written over June sales with July's so luckily I could skip backwards and find um, you know the previous state that it was at when it was June's before I overwrit it with July's sales so I was very lucky to be able to retrieve that which I'm dead chuffed about because having to explain that to the tax man in 12 months time that I'd lost an entire month's worth of figures would have been yeah, a bit of a nightmare. So yeah right we'll go, what we'll do first we'll move down to our totals it's all colour coded now look at this eh? Hi posh. So here we are. Right, my total sales for June came to £2,311. I hope you can see that. Uh, that's in this column here. Uh, I sold 99 items. Um, average selling price was £23 per item. Um, let's move down here. My PayPal fees for the month were £96, which is from this to uh, total here. Uh, my eBay shuttle fees, which were the... Um, the monthly eBay postage fees that get you get, you have to pay at the end of every month that came to two hundred and thirty eight pounds. So that's a big chunk of cash there to pay at the end of every month. It seems like eBay are changing that now, and they're going to be going with something called Pack Link instead of Shuttle. So you'll still get um, different postage options from different couriers, but it looks like you're going to have the ability to be able to pay the postage as you go rather than it being added onto your account, which I think will be a lot better, really. Um, eBay fees are £278 for the month, uh, which includes the £30 shop, sub shop subscription uh, and then 10% fees on 2300 and a few other bits and pieces. I don't know why that's a little bit higher. What I've actually started doing now, and I think that's a re really good advice for someone if you're thinking of making the leap to full time like I have, I'm actually choosing to pay my eBay fees weekly. So I think, you know, paying a quarter of it every week rather than all at once uh, at the end of the month at the same time as the shuttle fees is going to make a big difference to my cash flow as well. It means I'm not, you know, I'll have a bit more money at, towards the end of the beginning of the month and have it all spread out. So, yeah, that's quite a good little tip there for you all. Uh, ongoing fees are the storage rental, my keeper subscription, which I use for tracking the prices on Amazon. Uh, that's a really good bit of thing. I've got some significant uh, expenses here I've invested in a new laptop which I've actually been using and making make, been making payments on that uh, it cost me 500 pound but it's an 1100 pound laptop's absolutely brilliant and it's really helped my business massively and uh, what I've done here I've then categorized my other um, expenses through color um, don't know where I got this from, but it looks quite cool. So these here are my eBay purchases throughout the month are relevant to my business. Uh, Categorised them all and then I've printed them all out and saved them, saved the invoices. So they'll go in my folder to give to my accountant for the end of the tax year. Got to make sure you're doing that. I mean, the aim is to get as much stuff, you know, deducted off your um your income as possible so that you pay profits on as little as possible pay tax on as little as possible so yeah this is all legitimate expenses here so as you can see tape dispenser bubble wrap fba labels and all of these got a corresponding um invoice to them so after that doesn't want to let me scroll down for some reason right there after that we've got uh yellow is amazon color coded bits and pieces so they're things that i've bought on amazon with a name to sell um 
then we've got right this is an interesting one here facebook and look i've even done it blue like facebook <laughs> basically i buy a lot of stock off facebook a lot of the stuff that i buy to sell is from facebook marketplace and unfortunately there's no way at all let me just get my mouse there's no way at all that I can account for that for tax purposes, but that's a, a you know a significant chunk of my expenditure. So what I've started doing is going through my um, monthly uh, bank account, looking for any withdrawals. Cause my cash cash withdrawals are only due to whenever I buy something from Facebook. So all these amounts down here are the times that I've been to the cash point and taken money out to go and buy something from someone on Facebook. And they're all legitimate, but you know that's that's a it's quite a lot of money there really, and I, you know I don't want that to not have to pay tax on it. But I'm sure if the tax man you know wants to pry further, I've got you know I've got Facebook Messenger conversations to back up all them purchases. But other than that, I've got no other way really of proving that those. So I just thought I'd put them there, and if the accountant can do something with them, then great. But um yeah, they're they're all you know basically trying to account for things that I've bought from Facebook. Uh, the next section is actual receipts. These are receipts for things that I've bought from shops uh, to sell. So most of these are charity shops. I do have the corresponding receipts. Obviously, I've kept, I'm keeping them in a, in a, in a like a uh, folder box now. So there's quite a few there. Some building supplies there for some shelving that I've built. Um, fuel receipts, I've all made a note of them all there. So again, they're all color coded there. So if you can see there for the month, my total expenditure is just under two thousand pound, which means I've got a taxable profit of three hundred and fifty nine pound after after everything's come off. Now that doesn't sound like a lot, but obviously we do have other income coming in the house, so that's um you know obviously and we kept money back from the first few months just while I get started on this, so that's what I'm showing. Um, as my other half's just popped her head in. Hello, Jules. She's there. Okay, so that's um. That's where we're up to for June. So let's dive into these numbers now. Uh, what I've done, I don't know if you remember on my previous videos, so I've set up some little formulas on these. It's a very straightforward spreadsheet. So basically just going down the columns here, there's a list of date of what the item was sold, brief description of what the item was, how much it cost me, what it's sold for after postage, and then what the fees on that were, what the PayPal fees were, what my profit is in pounds and then what the profit margin is on the item. I, to be honest, I think I'm probably going to stop doing this in a few months time. Now I'm confident enough that I'm hitting my margins. Uh, look, I'm getting a, on average, a 66% profit margin on, every, on, on everything that I sell, which is brilliant. After everything's paid and taking off the cost of the items, I'm getting 66p for every, um, for every pound that I, that I sell. Yeah, 66p in my pocket, which is great. Oh, my cats have come to see me as well. Um, so, yeah, and 100 items a month. Now, it's a bit of a funny month, um, June was, because I did a couple of weeks back covering holidays at Cash Converters where I used to work. So, in that period, I was still selling, but I wasn't listing. So, it actually went a little bit quieter for me towards the end of the month. But it's certainly come back with a vengeance since. I've had an absolutely amazing July. I did not expect it to be going as well as it has. So, my sales in June um, were significantly lower than what they've been in July. July has been much better. Uh, I've done so far well on the 30th of July and I've done um, so £4,300 in sales in July which has been absolutely incredible. So yeah what I'm going to do now I'm just going to show you some highlights of some of the things that I've sold and if it's, uh, if it's anything interesting about them I'll try and cover it as well. So where are we? Oh yeah here it is uh, just a um, a snapshot of the my sales on eBay. So just to show you again there. Uh, uh, that total sales figure 2600 in case you're wondering why that's different to what's on my spreadsheet is because that includes postage whereas I don't count for that on my um, spreadsheet there because that's got its own separate thing through the shuttle payments but on that total there that's including the postage fees so yeah you know 100 items anything between three and four pound on average postage so that's where that sort of 300 pounds come from there that says I'm 12 0.1% up on May, which is good. Obviously, I think July is going to be massively better. A little breakdown there of um, a day to day sales, and also there's a list there of most expensive items downwards. So, I'm going to show you some of these here. No particular order, right? Here we go. Strap yourselves in. It's going to be a long one. Okay, first thing here, which is quite cool this is a really nice um, George Nelson vintage clock. 
uh, well, it's kind of starburst, sunburst type thing. I didn't describe it as that. I'd say it's an atomic style mid-century century clock. Got to be careful how I say that. It's actually missing some bits, as you can see, um, right there and there. So it took a little while to sell. It was on there two months. I think I paid a fiver for it from Facebook and ended up selling for £37. Had great fun with that because came to sell it. It had been sat there and the mechanism had froze. So I had to put a replacement mechanism on it, which was interesting. I'd never done that before, but it was working in the end. Had to take up, apart all the um, the clock face and the little hands and everything and just swap out the um, the mechanism. But uh, yeah, it was all fine afterwards and I've had positive feedback. So so yeah, that was great. That's um, £37 there off a of fiver. So yeah, really happy with that. Next we have this huge Lego Technic uh, Formula One car. Uh, again, it was another Facebook purchase. Uh, paid a little bit more for this. I paid uh, thirty. I think it was thirty, thirty-five pound. That ended up selling. It went to Germany for eighty pound. It took about two weeks to sell. So yeah, I was uh, happy with that. It was already built, already complete as well, which saved me a lot of time. I quickly checked that everything looked like it was there, which it did. Always put a little bit of a disclaimer in my listings just to say that can't guarantee it's 100% complete but looks looks fine and you're covering yourself then rather than putting complete and then someone's bound to come back and they have in the past and said look you know pieces XYZ are missing and you said it's complete so it's always better just to undersell something rather than oversell it I find that way when they get it you know they're, they're not going to be disappointed with it. So that went to Germany. Um, I've stopped using global shipping so much now. I'm doing a lot of my international shipping just through um, uh, parcel to go or Royal Mail. And it's found that I'm getting myself a lot more international orders because obviously eBay take a big chunk for the global shipping service. So now I'm, I'm a lot more confident in my sales. I've started using their um, just normal international shipping, setting the prices. And I've had loads of international buyers, which has been brilliant. Um, so yeah, so that went. Uh, that went to Germany. Uh, next, this is part of a stereo. Okay, this is to show you that if you're confident with your prices and it's a quality item, even if it's missing bits, things will sell. This was listed for a couple of weeks. Got it as part of a job lot from a friend of mine. He sold me some old electronics and stuff that he had lying around the house that he wasn't using anymore. So this is a Sony stereo, although it's missing the speakers. So it's literally just the center unit, the stereo. And uh, not only that, as you can see there, the um, volume controls damaged. It was still working, but cosmetically it was like hanging off. So again, I was accurate on the description. Look there, made sure I took decent photos of the damage. Uh, and yeah, that took took a week or so to sell. It's got a tape player with it as well. A really loud system. Tested it on some speakers of mine, and it, yeah, it sounded absolutely great. So yeah, that went for forty quid. So yeah, I was pleased with that one. Um, let me let you guys let me all know what you think of my videos because it's uh, it's creeping up my subscribers. I'm really really pleased with that, and it has sort of spurred me on to make me want to do more videos. I was something and hour about it for a time, but I've got into a really good routine now with my listing and my packing and everything. So I think I have I'm gonna have the time to do regular videos. So I'm chuffed with that. So if there's anything more you guys would like to see, just you know give me a shout in the comments or message me. Find me on Facebook. You know where I am, and uh, yeah, just give me a heads up. All right, this next one here, um, I've sold a few of these this month actually in July, but this one here I got from a charity shop. I've had it about a year and it's just been sat in the garage taking up space and I thought, you know what, I'll finally get them listed. So it's a uh, Guitar Hero for the Xbox 360. It's just a controller. Uh, luckily with the Xbox 360 ones, you don't need to worry about the wireless dongle because uh, it, the it's just the Xbox just picks it up straight away. So that's 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 pretty handy. Um, so let me see, yeah, just nice clear photos, always good. Um, photos of any damage, photo of any accessories. Uh, another one of my cats will come to see me. So I think I paid about eight quid for that, ended up selling for 28, so yeah, about 20 quid profit. Um, as you can see there, I've had my first negative feedback as well, which I'm not, not too pleased about, but there we go. Um, yeah, hang on a minute, let me close that one. Only another 83 more to show you. This is a lovely item. Um, so what this was, again, it was from a local charity shop. I paid £12 for it. It's an original, I think, 1950s, 1960s fire, fire brigade, fire service cap. Found out it was a sergeant's hat. They did a bit of research. But the unusual thing about this was it's actually, it was basically brand new. 
So it was new in its original box from the hat makers. So that's from Bates Gentleman's Hatter, German Street in London. How cool is that? And the whole thing was lovely. It had this really nice um, sort of silver embroidery at the front there. Little sort of plastic strap on there. Loads of little piping and things on it. It's just a lovely cap. Really caught my eye. And I couldn't find anything similar. So I priced it high and took a chance. Like I do with most of my things. Price them high. Uh, willing to take offers on a lot as well. That was on there two days and it sold for £50. I want to buy it now. I, I listed the condition as new, even though it's old, it had literally never been worn. You can see if I show you a picture of the inside there. Um, yeah, there's no wear, there's no marks around the rim whatsoever. Uh, it's got the original label there showing the hat size, which is seven and a quarter. Uh, it was far too small for my massive melon. I tried it on, it didn't fit me, as most hats don't, unfortunately. Um, yeah I've got a huge head so yeah that, that was a lovely sale that and um, I did message the guy to sort of ask who he was and just find out a bit about him and why, why he wanted it because I always think it's quite nice just to reach out to people and just ask them you know if they've got an interest in these kind of things but he didn't get back to me but that was a shame but he obviously knew what it was and knew that he wanted it so yeah um, good good for me uh, next we've got some Chanel uh, it's kind of like a, I was going to say an underlay then it's not an underlay it's a base foundation isn't it it's what you put on before your foundation like a primer if it was a car <laughs> I got this at a um, car boot sale type thing that I went to a couple of months ago I paid 50p for it it's it's half full you can just about see the there's the level it's half full there so it took a little while to sell um, description there bottles half full around 15 mil didn't know too much about it just copy and pasted the description made sure that it was, was actually hadn't all dried up and just listed it and stuck it on and yeah so that sold for 12 quid uh which was a good little sale this here was a um quite unusual this actually got this from facebook marketplace it's a uh, kenzo jungle uh, elephant sp elephant spray <laughs> that sounds really weird spray your elephants with this um so this was advertised as men's aftershave and I'd look at it and I was like, that's not a men's aftershave. And they wanted a fiver for it. First off, I thought it might have been a fake because there's loads of like replica perfumes and that knocking about, especially around where we live. Um, but no, it definitely wasn't. So I got this from the woman, paid a fiver for it, said she bought it for a boyfriend for Christmas and he didn't like it. Well, I'm not surprised he didn't like it. It's a bloody woman's perfume. So yeah, it hardly been used. It was, it was basically full. Um... And yeah, I got 30 quid for that. That had only been on there a couple of days. So 30 quid off a of fiver. So that was that was a cool little thing. Um, it smelled, sorry Kenzo fans, but that smelled absolutely horrible as well. Really not nice. <laughs> Did not like that. Um, what's next here now? Right, now that's what I call music. Fat box. I've got a fat box. I got 20 quid for my fat box. Here we go. So yeah, um, now a bit of a funny one. These For those of you who are into them probably know what's worth money and what's not. With the now stuff, um, you've got CDs, tapes, records, uh, and I recently found out mini discs are these things. Now some of these are worth an awful lot of money. Um, the early now CDs, all the way back to I think now number five, which might have been the first one that came out on CD, worth well worth picking up. Um, later ones on vinyl go for a lot of money because you know by the time mid 90s vinyl production had really slowed down so they were released in really low numbers um so they're really scarce and there are people who just collect now stuff as you can see this isn't in the best condition i got it for probably for a quid from a charity shop and i got 20 quid for that so yeah that's cool always keep your eye out for now stuff anything from about now 35 onwards on cd i wouldn't bother with um to be honest it's just not not worth doing for me I did see, however, um, just keep an eye out for, not that it's the kind of thing you're likely to see much, but um, now mini discs. They Just have a look on eBay and see how much now mini discs go for. You'll be well shocked. They go for loads. So, yeah, keep your eye out for them. So, that was a cute little sale. Next, right, this is well cool. Do you remember that Transformers lot? Well, you, of course you remember because it's all I talk about. I bought a load of uh, Shadow Transformers on Facebook. It's about three months ago now. Um, sold off all the media like books and graphic novels and DVDs um, still yet to list the toys but I kind of have nearly finished um, sorting them out but this here was a collection of that was a stock photograph I used 
I had like 10 individual items listed on eBay and some guy in Australia asked, is there any way he wants to buy them all? And I said, yeah, absolutely, mate. Um, so well, it might, might have been a Sheila, might, might not have been a Bruce, it might have been a Sheila, I don't know. Um, it went to somebody there, so it could could, could have been a Sheila. Um, so I sold all 10 of them to for him for 85 quid. Bear in mind, I paid 500 for the entire lot of all the Transformers, which there are 700 of them, by the way. So yeah, so I've done really well from that. So I cre created a generic listing just for him, uh, times 10 volumes as discussed. So he paid, cost me a lot of money to send it because of the weight. It was well over five kilos, a big parcel. And it went, I went, sent my big parcel down under um, for 85 quid. And it cost me about 40 quid shipping. Yeah, there's loads of innuendos now because it's, of course it is because it's half 12 at night. And of course I'm waking up. Um, yeah, so that makes sense. Uh, oh yeah, and I did um, I did a little charity thing. I do that on some of my auctions, some of my sales. I do. Um, my daughter's got type one diabetes, so I do donate here and there on some of my listings. Um, not completely cold and heartless. Uh, next, we have a Microsoft light gun. Um, it's not even like an official one. It's by Four Gamers. So at the time, you know, ten years ago, you couldn't give these away, but they seem to have crept up in price now. Uh, I think basically because you can't don't really get light guns on modern TVs. So for games like let's think House of the Dead, um, struggling to think of any other Xbox light gun games. Uh, this was on there about a month. It was part of a job lot that I've had sat there for ages. Uh, just a nice quick easy sale. Got twenty quid for it. One photo, two photo, three photos. Be looking very threatening with it. Uh, and then yeah, twenty quid that went. Okay, next we have uh this delightful little konica uh is it a 35 mil camera this sold to some guy in america right now this sold six weeks ago and i've had a message from him today saying the rewind button's not working on it and he wants a partial refund i'm like dude it's taking you six weeks to tell me that so i'm un umming and ahhing I, I, you know, i'm not obliged to give him any money back so i don't know yet whether i will or not really so you know it's taken him this long for him to say so, don't know. But how cool is that? What a lovely looking camera. I got that from um, Oxfam Charity Shop, a local one. Um, paid, I think, eight quid for it. Uh, just quality. It looks really smart. It's like basically in new condition. I had no way of testing it because I didn't have any film. So, it was sold as untested. Um, seems to work fine, but I've not tested with film. Um, so, yeah, that was that was fine. That went over. Um, there we go. What else we got? Many, many windows open here. My computer's <laughs> creaking along all these uh, windows open. Uh, and none of them are porn. So, yeah, for once. Okay, next we have some Stuart Weitzman shoes. Look at these. Don't they just make you want to go out and party? These were from a uh, local Bernardo's charity shop. I paid, again, a little bit more than I usually do. Um, don't know too much about women's heels, believe it or not. Um, so, these are sort of snakeskin effect. They were brand new. They they haven't been worn at all, as I'll show you in a sec. Um, someone bought them, then cancelled, and I ended up selling them again for forty pound. So that's a nice flip. Um, there we go. Yeah, look at those. I suppose the right circumstances they'd be quite cool, but yeah, not 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 for me personally. Uh, let's have a look on the heels. Yeah, I'll show you on the soles there. It still had the labels on the bottom, so I took the labels off. There's no wear on the soles whatsoever. Uh, so yeah, they went for 40 quid. So yeah, just with that, so I can even sell women's shoes. Okay, another one of the Transformers uh, annuals things that I sold. That one, it's really rare actually. That went for 20 quid. Any Transformers fans uh, out there probably be aware that after G1 dipped towards the end of the 80s, beginning of the 90s, and then it was replaced with Generation 2, which didn't do very well at all. The toys of it, yeah, they're pretty awful to be honest with you. I'm not a big fan. That artwork is really bad. This is one of the annuals, but I think at the time mine was the only one that's available on sale and on on eBay in the entire world. So again, I didn't have a clue how to, what what to um, charge for it. So I stuck it up high, put it on for twenty quid, and I think that went it went somewhere in the UK. I can't remember where, but um, yeah, that's that sold for twenty quid. Just show you a quick look at the artwork there. Try and show an example. Yeah, really sort of dated, garish artwork there. I'm not, not a fan of that, to be honest. But someone's happy with it, so yeah, pleased with that. Uh, next, we've got... Right, okay. Got a Sony DVD multi-region 
DVD recorder with 250 gig hard drive. This stuff sells all day long. Always keep your eye out for Sony. Sony stuff always sells. Sony, Panasonic, Philips, um, to a lesser, lesser extent, Toshiba. Um, Technics always sells well. Marantz, these are all brands that I always keep an eye out for. Got this, I paid £15 for it from British Heart Foundation. They always sell their electronic stuff really cheap. Um, they also give you a six month warranty on it, which I think is amazing for a charity shop. So dead chuffed with that. So I could have taken it back if it didn't work. That was listed less than a week and then it sold for 80. I tested it fully, obviously, made sure it worked, made sure it recorded and made sure I've got some region one discs. So I made sure it played multi-region, which it did. So yeah, that went um, for 80. So that's quite a nice uh, flip on 15 pounds. Okay, next we have this hideous donkey this little fella i had something like this when i was a kid and i saw this at the same car boot i believe it or not i've only been to one car boot sale the entire time i've been doing this full time just one not a single one of my sales is from car boot stuff so i got this from i think i paid a couple of quid for him because it's something similar to what i had or my brother might have had when i was a kid and it was it was out in the rain it was bedraggled it looked awful really tacky but there was something charming about him i thought i just got to bring him home and I got lynched by the missus for bringing it in the house because she thought it was cursed. I'm like, it's not cursed. It's just it's just really ugly. So this went, it's quite big as well, actually. It doesn't sort of do it justice, those pictures. This went to a theatre company, which I thought was really cool. And they used it as a prop in one of their plays. I thought it was absolutely fantastic. So I was dead pleased he's found a little home in a theatre group, living out the rest of his days. So yeah, pay two quid, got 16 quid for him. So yeah, all good. Uh, next we have these things i sold two of these they are silly string blasters uh they don't look very silly um yeah there we go two sold 15 quid each i got them as a job lot from facebook with some lightsabers sort of full-size blasters they take cans of silly string and you can squirt them all over your enemies so yeah they, they went well oh yeah star wars apparently general grievous but i he never used blasters so i don't know why they were called that all right well what now Okay, I've shown you this one just to demonstrate that even old software can sell. Microsoft Office 2000. I mean, who is using Microsoft Office 2000? It's nearly 20 years old. Um, this, when I paid 50p for it, 16 quid. Yep, yeah, I'll, I'll take those kind of margins. Happy with that. Uh, pictures, nice and clear. Uh, it's got the serial number here somewhere in it. Um, always try and make a note of that in case they try saying it doesn't work. Uh, picture of the box, yeah, blah blah blah. So yeah, even though obsolete text and obsolete software still sells, there's still people out there using old computers that will want to use this and install it. So that went for 16 quid. Okay, next we've got who remembers this stuff? Uh, that should be the name of my channel. Who remembers this? Who remembers the 80s? Who remembers old things? This is robotics. Now, I was gutted about this because it didn't actually work. It's a massive box full of this stuff, and I used to love it. It was a backup story in the Transformers comic when I was a kid, and it was just obviously just to flog the toys, and it was a bit of a rip-off of Zoids at the time. But I got it from a charity shop for like four quid. Full of bits and pieces in there. Look at all that. Look at all those spacey things. It's so cool. It was basically, it was two complete sets been put together in one box, and you can add it together and make all these like robots and contraptions and things um but i um unfortunately it didn't work so i put batteries in it and tested it and it, it you know it didn't work so uh, i got 32 quid for it i think it had to it actually been working i would have got about 50 quid but yeah i was so happy for it to go at that at that price okay next up we have a nintendo 64 uh, i was given this by a friend of mine who works for a charity and she said they had no use for it so i made the donation to the charity and she gave me a couple of bits she had lying around so yeah, thanks Klinos and Gaz if you're listening, much appreciated. Uh, that there is got £53 for a Nintendo 64, a couple of games there, made a bit of a bundle out of it. Uh, and yeah, that went 52 quid. Took a few weeks to sell, but that went eventually. So that didn't actually cost me anything that other than the donation. Okay, next we've got, right, this is one of the best sales I've ever had. Apart, Well, apart from one of the ones I've had in July, but we'll get on to that next month, so you're going to have to wait for that. But this one here, it's a Bang & Olufsen record player. Let me show it you. I, pay, I got £300 for that. So, it was a Facebook pickup. I got this and a Bang & Olufsen um, 
Beogram system, which is like a amplifier, speakers, radio thing, all built in. I paid fifty pound for that and for this. This got listed. I'm tested it. Obviously, made sure it worked. It was absolutely fine. Uh, it was on a week or two, and then sold. I had it on as best offer, but someone just bought it at the full price of two hundred ninety nine, which was amazing. Did a little bit of research and found out it actually went to a perfume shop in Italy, a high-end perfume shop. How cool is that? Rescued it from Facebook from someone in North Wales and it is now playing some chilled Italian lounge music in a perfume shop in Italy. That is amazing. And it's a lovely system as well. Look at this. Really, really pretty. Um, stunning, that is. Look at it. It was immaculate as well. Such a lovely, lovely piece. If I didn't already have a record deck and that, I'd have probably kept it, but I'd, I'd rather have the £300 in my pocket, to be honest. So, yeah, loads of photos. Clear photos of the needle. There we go. My phone doesn't take the best pictures, but it's not bad. It's good enough for eBay, really. I am going to be upgrading my phone soon, so my photo should be a bit clearer. So, yeah, description was... Did I go to town on the description? A little bit. 8 out of 10. Described any imperfections. Um, say that I've tested it. Described the motor function and stuff. So, yeah, that went. Okay, next, a goblin tease made. Who doesn't like a good goblin? Um, that tacky thing, I can't believe they used to be so popular, but I didn't have a clue what they were worth. They're not worth much, really. They sell for between 20 and £30. Pound. So I paid a fiver for it and got 23 quid for that. It was an absolute pain to ship because that's ceramic, that's plastic, that's metal. It's got all these other different bits and pieces. It's large, it's bulky, it's heavy, and it's fragile. It's like every combination that you don't want when you're shipping things. So I was glad to see the back of that, but it took me about half an hour genuinely to get that packed up. So that went, yeah, that got uh, yeah, 23 quid on that. Uh, nearly there. Uh, that's a Star Wars lightsaber, uh, Darth Tyrannus, which was uh, Christopher Lee's character in Attack of the Clones, from that one good scene from the film. Uh, that went for 20 quid. We're on to now this vintage jigsaw that I got from a charity shop, uh, not my local town, somewhere a bit further afield. I got two, both by the same manufacturer. Um, both have sold for 20 quid each, which I'm pleased about. Very old. I've got no way of checking. Well, I'm certainly not going to go through all 2,000 pieces and make sure they're there, but it seemed like it was complete. <laughs> That's my excuse. Um, so, yeah, that went. Uh, and it's not come back yet. So, anyway, they must, they must be happy with it. 20 quid on that. Uh, more shoes. I do really well on footwear, and I've sold a load in July as well. Um, some women's Nike blazer. Quite cool colours on those, teal and neon and silver. Uh, there's some wear on the front, so they're not in perfect condition, as you can see. But I think as long as you're honest, as long as you show people the quality of what they're getting, then, you know, they will sell eventually. Um, yeah, there we go. Uh, I paid a couple of quid for them. They went for 25 quid on a buy it now. They didn't take long to sell, actually. So, yeah, that's good. Uh, then we've got Top Gun cassette. I put I just put this on because I love Top Gun really. Paid 50p for it. Probably should have kept it, uh, especially with the new film coming out, which looks amazing, by the way. Um, that was on there less than a week and it sold for seven quid. So that was great. This is an unusual little item. This was a, a remote control receiver for a vintage Philips CD player. How cool is that? It looks like something from 2001 A Space Odyssey. Um, so that plugs into the back of a CD player and the remote control then can talk to it uh, because the CD player itself doesn't have built-in remote functionality. I'm actually still got the CD player listed on my eBay. But this thing, that was on there less than, well, it was about a day and it sold for 30 quid and I only paid 15 quid for the CD player with that combined. So, so that was nice and that went to London, this obelisk pyramid type thing. That was really cool. Uh, we've only got four things left, four interesting things left to show you. Uh, okay, we've got a vintage, I like that word, say it a lot. It's on all my listings, vintage, <laughs> retro vintage, vintage retro. Um, Space Quest 4 for MS-DOS on a three and a half inch floppy. I also like saying three and a half inch floppy. Um, lots of discs, no way of testing it, but these old Sierra games go for really good money, the original ones. So Space Quest, King's Quest, those kind of things, always keep an eye out for them. 
paid a quid or two for that probably i think and then got 20 for it so that was nice load of hip-hop albums um not a big fan but they were four for a pound at a charity shop so i bundled them up all together and they went for 25 quid okay next we've got oh this is cool uh, i went to birmingham um, a couple of months back and found this desigual desigual don't know how it's pronounced desigual shirt really liked it and if it was my size i'd have probably kept it but it was a double xl and uh, it was used to be a double xl but not anymore so it would be like a tent on me now um so that's really cool bit of paisley bit of stripes and checks and all sorts going on on that uh that wasn't on there long that went to Sp did it go did it go to spain got a feeling that went abroad through global shipping I got 30 quid for that and it cost me six, seven quid from a charity shop in the city centre as well. So just goes to show, you know, the stuff out there, even in, a, you know, busy city centres, you know, there is still decent stuff out there. And the last one is this, which was another Facebook pickup, paid a tenner for it and got 63 quid for it. So printers will go if they're decent printers. This is a laser jet, black and white laser printer with a new toner cartridge. And I say I paid a tenner off Facebook and got 63 quid for it so yeah there we go that's a highlight of some of my sales for june now the july one isn't going to be much longer probably within the next week or so so that one there is some really cool stuff on there might be a bit of a longer video as well go in depth more about my sales figures and talk about you know how my business is going and how i'd like it to move forward really because it is absolutely going incredibly um, I'm up to 300 active items on eBay now, which is like double one of the most that I've ever had. And yeah, it's just things going great. Stuff selling every single day. You know, I'm finding plenty of stuff to sell and I really settled into my new routine. So hope you've all enjoyed this video. Thanks for sticking up with me. It's now 10 to 1 in the morning and this is Jay on the Bay signing off. Good night.